you probably heard the 49ers are going to be using a wide nine defensive look next season. You might be wondering what the hell that means. I got you covered. I'm going to I'm going to explain what a wide nine base defense is, make it real clear, show you with pictures, and I'm going to break down the strengths and the weaknesses of this alignment. First thing you need to know about it, you just real simple. It refers to one player, the strong side defensive end. It's called a wide nine defensive lineman because he's the wide nine. He is lined up all the way outside the tight end, not head up on the tight end or outside the left tackle. He is as far away from the center as a defensive lineman possibly could be. Compare that to last season. Here was a strong side defensive end over here, Solomon Thomas. He's not outside the tight end. He's head up on the tight end slightly, slightly shaded to the inside. Whole different thing. Here he is. Wide nines out here. What this is is called a six eye technique, a six with an inside shade, a six technique. Head up is six. Uh, head up with the tight end is six technique. Six eye is slightly inside. It's a small difference. It seems kind of trivial, but it has major ramifications on the rest of the defense. I just want to point out a couple more features of this old defense that the Niners had that are going to be gone. Uh, you got the strong safety three yards off the line of scrimmage, closer to the offensive linemen than these inside linebackers. We're not going to see that anymore. And you got the uh, strong side linebacker outside the tackle box. Not going to see that anymore. Here you got the strong safety 10 yards deep. You got the strong side linebacker inside the, the wide nine defensive end. And you got this nose tackle instead of being on the outside shoulder of the center, he's on the inside shoulder of the guard. Those are the main differences. These guys are pretty much in the same position. You got D-gap defender, C-gap defender, B-gap defender, A-gap defender, A-gap defender, B-gap defender, C-gap defender. That's how it breaks down. This is the eighth man in the box. You can bring him down from either spot. Um, the one, the two people I want you to really focus on are the wide nine and the Sam linebacker. These are the two most important people here. Uh, the wide nine has to have outside contain. He can't let any run get outside of him. He's going to always stay on the outside of the tight end, engage with the inside arm and try to keep the outside arm free. This one here. The strong side linebacker is a plugger, a thumper. In the past, you had guys chasing, running and chasing. This guy has to be responsible for the C-gap. He has to charge down downhill, as coaches say, extremely aggressively in case this, free set, this fullback comes up to block him or a guard pulls. He is a old-school downhill linebacker. Last year it was different. The, the defensive end, since he's not a wide nine, he's a C-gap player. The strong safety is the D-gap player. You got D-gap, C-gap, B-gap, A-gap, A-gap, B-gap, C-gap, D-gap over here. So what the Niners would do last year was Solomon Thomas was supposed to charge. He was, uh, was supposed to charge into the C-gap and spill it. They call spilling it. Make, force the running back to bounce outside. The new wide nine, that's called containing. You're boxing everything in forcing the running back to cut back into the teeth of the defense. This is spilling it to the sideline, or it's supposed to be. He's a chase player. So Solomon Thomas is supposed to go to the inside. He doesn't. He doesn't really. He just kind of goes straight into the chest of the blocker, which is what he does a lot. You're not supposed to do that. But the whole idea is, to, if it were a run play, to funnel the running back out here toward the strong safety who could chase him down. So this is... Spilling and chasing, what the Niners are moving to is uh, containing and thumping. Opposite philosophies. Now let's get into the strengths and weaknesses of the wide nine alignment and start with the strengths. The primary strength, the main reason to adopt this alignment is to supercharge your pass rush. If you're installing the wide nine into your defense, chances are your pass rush wasn't very good in the past and you're looking for results like this right here and you're willing to sacrifice some run defense to get it. Let's go back and look at this in slow motion and see exactly what's going on. So again, wide nine. Let's start with exactly how this alignment uh, impacts the strong side defensive end. He is the wide nine guy, so let's start with him. Again, he's outside the tight end. A full gap outside the tight end. Not even touching him. The tight end can run straight up the field. This guy can run right around him. The right tackle is pretty far away from the strong side defensive end. 
look at how spread out all the defensive ends are. They're not in each other's way. They have a lot of space to maneuver and work. The right tackle, just from the alignment of the strong side of the wide nine guy, he's pissing down his leg right now. He's thinking, how am I possibly going to kick slide fast enough to get all the way out here and block this guy? It's hard. Just the wide nine alignment makes a speed rusher even faster. It makes a speed rusher even more dangerous. This is Cliff Averill here. Think of it as D this is going to be D Ford for the 49ers. And here this is, the lines are at home. They probably have a lot of crowd noise in the dome. That makes it even tougher to block a wide nine guy because the right tackle, he's real far away from the center, can't hear him, has to peek over here, watch the ball get snapped, then turn his head and find the wide nine rusher. And you'll see he's the last guy off the snap. He's still, he's still frozen in his stance, only gets one hand on the guy. This is what the Niners are hoping D4 is going to do. This was a second and eight play, not third and six. Second and eight, and he just blew by the right tackle. One more thing to notice. Look at the angle. He doesn't have to make a hard 90-degree turn. Just a gradual, maybe a 60-degree turn, and he's there. Real conducive to pass rush. Now compare that wide nine pass rusher to what the Niners were doing last year with their strong side defensive end. Where is he? Look for the tight end. Here's the tight end. Now here's the strong side defensive end. Notice he's not out here. There's a linebacker out here. He's inside the tight end. So he doesn't have that 60 degree turn. He has to make a hard 90 degree turn around a left tackle who starts off very close to him. This is DeForest Buckner who's not really a defensive end, but he's really not in a position to, to turn the corner here. It's, he's a pure run defender from this position. And it makes sense. You're going against the Seahawks. They're a run first team. You want to be able to stop the run. And this is the strong side of the formation where they're most likely to run it. So he's a pure run defender. The nose tackle going to get double team, pure run defender. The only pass rush threats in the Niners' old base uh, defense were the three technique on the weak side and the five technique on the weak side. And Solomon Thomas isn't really a pass rush threat. So that means there's one in this look, and it's Eric Armstead. He does beat the right guard and force Russell Wilson out of the pocket. Uh, of course, one guy isn't enough to chase down Russell Wilson. I don't, I don't remember Eric Armstead ever catching him. The Niners will need three and four, and they might get that more often next season. So I, I showed you, I demonstrated how this alignment is really beneficial to the wide nine guy over here. This right tackle has to really kick hard and cover a lot of ground to block him. But there is a byproduct of this effect there's a byproduct of this benefit to the wide nine guy, and it has to do with the guy next to him, the three technique. It's, it's just as important. I mean, think of if this is D4, this is going to be DeForest Buckner. This is a clip from 2011, so this is in Dama He's going to have, look at how much space there is between him and the other guys. He has space to work. The Niners have had a real tough time creating one on one matchups for DeForest Buckner. On pass rush, in pass rush situations on any down, he's always getting double teamed because he's the best player on the D-line. This particular alignment makes it very difficult to double team a three technique. Just by this alignment, he's going to create a lot of space down here, forces the right tackle down. So now when the wide nine makes contact here, look at how much space there is. He can go here, Sue, three technique, can go here, he can go here, he can go straight. He can get creative. He can do whatever he wants. Or, if he doesn't get there, if he just keeps pushing, these guys can run around here, force McNabb to step up, and Sue can get the sack just by being at the right place at the right time. Three guys converging on the quarterback. That's what the Niners hope Nick Bosa, D. Ford, and DeForest Buckner do next season. So I alluded to the fact that the Niners had a lot of trouble, have had a lot of trouble getting DeForest Buckner one-on-one -on -one opportunities since he's come into the league. He's been consistently double teamed. Well, he's not on the field right here, but pretend he's this guy. This is his position. This is his backup. Bucks are just taking a break. He's on the sideline for this particular play, week two against the Lions. Just notice the difference in alignment first off. In the other look, what the Niners are adapting, uh, changing to, the strong side DN becomes a wide nine guy and he's way out here. So there's all kind of space between him and the three technique. But in the Niners' base defense, it's the first down. this is a first down play. He's back inside the tight end in a 6 eye technique. That means Armstead and Day, their feet are practically touching. They're basically joined at the hip. So when, they, when it's a pass play and it's not a run, they're, in, they're basically in run defending position. But when it's a pass, 
Day goes into the B gap, Armstead goes into the C gap, and they just get pushed together. There's no space. They get in each other's way. The offensive lineman can just sort of muddle everything together, and they Armstead and Day essentially kind of block themselves. There's nowhere for either. There's nowhere for either guy to go. Armstead gets knocked on his butt, and Akella Witherspoon gives up a touchdown catch. Doesn't mean Sheldon Day's a bad pass rusher from the interior. He's pretty good. He just didn't have a chance on that on that play because of that alignment. Second strength of the wide nine defensive alignment is the ability to stop finesse runs outside the tackles, uh, like outside zone. One of the most popular plays in the NFL. Here's the wide nine defensive end. The idea of the outside zone is to get outside the tight end and run, turn the corner, get down the sideline, run through the, the nine hole, the eight and the nine hole. Well, it's pretty much impossible to get outside the tight end when you have a wide nine outflanking the width of the offensive formation. All he has to do is fire straight up field, force the cutback. Outside zone, you want to give the, the running back the option of getting outside or cutting back. The defense, just, just the alignment of the strong side DN forces the cutback. There's no option. You have to cut back. Now, on this particular play, there's a huge cutback window because no one was in that backside B gap. Uh, right here. You got two guys over here in the D-gap, no one here. Freeman saw it. So the design of the defense worked on the front side. There was just no one in this gap back here. Um, not sure if that's how they coached it or that, that was a busted assignment having two guys on the edge, but you see how it's very difficult to run outside the tackles. Everything gets pushed back to the interior. See? One more time. Here's how the 49ers defended the outside zone last season. Got your strong side D end over here. It looks like he's in a wide nine alignment, but he's going to walk down inside the tight end and be a C-gap player uh, like he typically was last season in the Niners' defense. So he's going to try to spill the run outside and have this linebacker chase him down. Uh, it's possible. It's just harder to do than, just, than simply containing it. So this guy doesn't get any penetration. There's no spilling happening, no spillage. This guy doesn't have to run back and around. He's just running a, basically a diagonal straight to the line. The sideline, we go back. We see the linebacker scraping and shuffling to the side, gets cut off here, blocked by his own guy. And it's the easiest 12-yard gain C.J. Anderson's ever had. So, yeah, you can stop the outside zone run this way. It's just a lot harder. And the way the Niners are going to do it next year with the wide nine will be more effective. Wide nine look is also extremely effective at stopping the jet sweep. That's another finesse outside the tackle run. It's a lot like the outside zone. It's just coming from a different angle at a different speed. Here you see Tariq Cohen trying to run the jet sweep against the wide nine. Here's the wide nine DN. And the same as the outside zone. All he has to do is run straight up field. He sets the edge, determines the cutback for the offense, forces the running back, the jet sweeper, back into the teeth of the defense, and he loses a yard. Just a very simple, effective way to stop the jet sweep. And it's exactly how, well, it's similar to how Bill Belichick and the Patriots shut down the Rams' jet sweep in the Super Bowl. The only difference was this guy on the Patriots was standing up instead of down in a four-point stance. Same principle, though. Box it in. Contain it. Because that happens. Here's last season's base defense trying to, shut, trying to stop the jet sweep with the Spill and chase technique, not the contain and not the contain technique. So here we go, strong side D end inside the tight end. Gonna try. He's gonna charge up field and try to tr force the jet sweeper to spill around, which he does. This is executes that correctly. Watkins gives ground, and now it's up to Reuben Foster to chase down a wide receiver who's faster than him. One of the faster linebackers in the league couldn't get him. It's just hard to ask a 230-pound guy to chase down a 195-pound wide receiver who runs a 4-4. Is that Reuben Foster's fault, or were you asking him to do something he couldn't really do? Hard to say. Maybe he should make that tackle, but next year the Niners won't be really asking their linebackers to chase all the way out to the sideline against a guy who's faster than them. Final strength of the wide nine defensive alignment. It's subtle, but it's important. It's really conducive to playing cover two or man coverage with a two high shell uh, but particularly cover two because look 
when the snap happens, you got these three linebackers clumped right together. They're exactly where they need to be when they drop into their cover two zones because cover two is two deep, five underneath. The two cornerbacks in the flat and the three linebackers right over the middle. They're right where they need to be. The strong safety before the snap isn't so far down that he can't get back. He's more than 10 yards off the line of scrimmage, about 10 yards. Maybe eight, but he can still drop. So the linebackers are in perfect position. The safety can go either way. Flexib flexibility to go up or back. This is a flexibility the Niners didn't really have last season. I'll show you. Here's a quick look at the Niners' base defense from last season. And as you can see, it's just not an option to run cover two from this look because the strong safety, who would need to be the deep half defender, is three yards off the line of scrimmage, closer to the center than the uh, closer to the offensive lineman than the inside linebackers. He can't drop that far. He's committed to playing either man coverage or uh, the flat in cover three. So the Niners were really limited to cover one and cover th cover one man, cover three zone last season. Next season they should have more coverage flexibility in the in the end, the ability to disguise their coverage as pre-snap, which is a good thing. Now let's talk about the weaknesses of the wide nine alignment. I'm going to stick with the theme of coverage. It, it's good for running cover two. You see it, you have all these guys clumped up in the middle of the field, but it's not good for running cover three, which is what the Niners run more than any other coverage. It's, it's the basis of their entire pass defense, cover three. This new alignment really isn't what you want to be aligned in pre-snap to play cover three, and I'll show you why. Let's go back to, to pre-snap. Cover three. Cover two, you got five underneath, two deep. Cover three, you got four underneath, three deep. So this guy here and this guy here are your flat defenders. They have to get from here all the way over here. In cover two, the flat defenders are already located there pre-snap. So that's a long way to go, a very long way to go to get to your landmark. You can get outflanked. This tight end could beat you out there. Uh, this fullback could beat this strong safety out there. Uh, they are inside the box so they can be blocked, they can be picked off, they can be screened out of the play. Uh, it, it's much more difficult. In cover two, they just get to basically stand where they were. In cover three, they got a hump to get out there. Watch how the Niners attacked a wide nine defense playing cover three in 2011. Right now, the strong safety gets picked by, the, by Delaney Walker. So he's late getting out to the flat to get Bruce Miller. Also in cover three, if, if the number two receiver, meaning the inside receiver, goes deep, inside receiver, this guy has to carry him. So he's late getting outside, and he's, and he's going to be a step late behind him going deep. Just a really hard coverage assignment from where he was lined up pre-snap. Bruce Miller's open. Alex Smith didn't throw him the ball because Alex Smith uh, was a check down champion back in 2011, but you can see how that Sam linebacker was in a very difficult spot uh, just for a simple assignment of covering the flat and cover three. All right, let's watch the Niners play cover three out of their old base defense. This is the, the defense that Pete Carroll created, and he made it specifically because it's so conducive to playing cover three. Remember, in cover three, you, you need the, the strong side linebacker and the strong safety to cover a lot of ground after the snap and get out to the flat. They're responsible to be out here, they're over here. But instead of being in the box between the tackles pre-snap, you got the strong safety outside the wide nine guy. You got a six eye inside the tight end and a strong safety way out here, way closer to his, to his uh, destination, to his landmark. He's not going to get outflanked by this tight end, never going to happen. He's in perfect position to get out where he needs to be. This is why... The Niners use this look because it's so good for cover three. Right? So much comes down to the wide nine guy and, and the guy outside of him. If he's a wide nine, then this guy has to be inside. If he's a six eye, then this guy has to be outside. If he's a wide nine, this guy's in great position to play cover two. If he's a six eye, this guy's in great position to play cover three. 
But, you know, everything has strengths and weaknesses. It's interesting that the Niners would adopt adopt a defensive look that's really better suited for cover two than cover three, considering they're such a cover three team. Another weakness of the wide nine defense, and by far the biggest weakness, is the ability to stop runs between the tackles. I pointed out how spaced out the defensive linemen are earlier and how that's good for pass rush, but it's really not good for run defense. Well, it's not that it's bad for run defense. It's just by taking the, the strong side defensive end and moving him so far out, almost out of the box, it puts a lot of pressure on this linebacker right here, the strong side linebacker. And unless he's just a flat-out stud, this defense is really vulnerable to a myriad of runs between the tackles, including inside zone, which is the most prevalent play in the NFL. Teams use it more than anything. This is the Lions trying to defend inside zone and failing, giving up an easy six yards. Um, and I'll take you through it again real, real, real slow. You got the nose tackle here, the three technique, excuse me. He's going to get double teamed by the guard and the tackle. You got two tight ends. They're not even going to kick this guy out. They're just going to go straight up on him with the tight end against a defensive end and bring this tight end up against the Sam linebacker and figure that there's going to be enough of a hole here and that this guy, this tight end, is going to get enough of a push on this 245-pound linebacker to get a positive gain. And they're right. This linebacker here is Tahir Whitehead. He's on the line back, He's on the Raiders now. He's 245 pounds. That's pretty big for a linebacker these days, but he's still not big and strong enough to stop this run, to fill this huge C-gap that he's responsible for. It's a tough assignment. Now, the Niners' strong side, defense, a strong side linebacker is Dre Greenlaw, a rookie who's 225 pounds. He's more of a scrape and shuffler guy who would benefit from a, a, sp a spill and chase system. He's not a plugger. He's not a thumper. That's more like Mark and Zoucha is 245 pounds, but he's not really a, a great plugger. I mean, the Niners have a platoon there and, and no true three-down sandbacker. There are other ways to run between the tackles against... Uh, the wide nine look as Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman and the 49ers showed back in 2011 when they faced the Lions in their famous wide nine look. This was a 47-yard run, I'm sure you remember. But like I said, the whole thing with the wide nine is they're, they're shutting you down on the outside. They're not letting you get to outside the tight end, which is what they call like the eight and the nine hole, the eight hole on the right side. But this six hole inside the tight end is as big as the Grand Canyon. So in the last clip I showed you, there was nothing fancy going on. It was just an inside zone play. Uh, these guys, you know, these guys blocking here and just accepting that the hole was big enough to begin with. Here they're going to take a big hole and make it even bigger by cross blocking. Take, taking Delaney Walker, whamming Ndamukong Su from the side. They're not going to block him at first. They're going to take the guard, move him up, and hit him from the side, use his aggression against him, and then take... Vernon Davis, kick out the wide nine guy. You're going to see, instead of trying to get around the wide nine guy, teams are just going to kick him out. And it's not that hard to do, especially if he's 250 pounds like D Ford is. This is a tight end moving Cliff Averill. Look, so I'm talking too much. <laughs> look, at the, look, at the, look at the whole pre-snap, and then look at how much bigger it gets. There's a huge hole there. Obviously, you want to run through that. But then look, at it gets even bigger. Kick him out, kick him out. Now it's huge. And now it comes down to, can this strong side linebacker fill all of this? No, obviously not. And especially, he's supposed to meet Anthony Davis in the hole and knock him back. I mean, Anthony Davis is 330 pounds. I don't even know who this guy is. There's, there's no chance. All Gore has to do is follow Anthony Davis. You're asking a whole lot of your standing linebacker in this wide nine look. Look at this. He goes this way, Gore goes here. So, that's quite a crater that teams are going to try to take advantage of when they face the 49ers. Here are some other ways teams will look to attack the wide nine look in the run game. So I showed you you can do the inside zone, just kick him out here with the tight end and double team this guy. Or, if you want to make this hole even bigger, bring the tight end straight out the Sam linebacker. He's unprotected and then kick out the wide nine with the left tackle. A little cross block. Or you could do a G lead scheme where you take the tight end, move him up in the Sam linebacker, block down on the three technique with the left tackle, pull the play side guard, kick out the wide nine. Or you could run power and bring the, the, the guard from the backside all the way through over here. 
have him come up on the, on the strong side linebacker. Kick him out with the tight end. Bring a 330-pound guard up on this 245-pound linebacker. There's a lot of ways you can attack this guy, push him out, and attack this guy with bigger players. Teams are going to do it a lot. Now, maybe the Rams won't do it because the Rams are an outside zone team like the Niners. The Niners should be better equipped to stop Todd Gurley and those guys uh, when they face L.A. But when they face a team like the Seahawks, whose offensive line coach is Mike Solari, the same guy who was the Niners' offensive line coach when they ran over the Lions' wide nine look in 2011, he'll know exactly how to attack this scheme. Uh, so that's what the Niners can expect when they face Seattle. This is how the 49ers defended the inside zone run last season. The Niners were really good at defending runs between the tackles last season because they had four guys pretty much clumped up, not to mention this outside linebacker and this strong safety on the line of scrimmage, basically six guys. Much easier to run around that than to run through it. Um, so I'll show you why it's different, why, this, why they were so well suited to defend this inside zone. So again, the offense is going to double team here and try to run the inside zone back behind here where the strong side DN would be. Now, if this was a wide line, wide nine look, this guy would be all the way over here, and it would be easy. You could bring two tight ends, and you could bring one tight end over here uh, up on, this, on the strong linebacker and get an easy five yards, an easy six yards. But in this case, the defensive end isn't out here. He's in the C-gap. So when Barkley looks to come behind the double team, and accelerate through that C-gap, it's impossible. He has to bounce it to the outside. The defense has done what it's supposed to do. It has spilled the running back outside where the strong safety is set in the edge. Nowhere for him to go, just a one-yard gain. This is what the 49ers will not do next season on runs between the tackles. Final weakness of the wide nine look, and it's subtle, but it's extremely significant. It's prone to get taken advantage of by play action passes. It's weak against the play action. And again, it comes down to the wide nine guy and the guy behind the C-gap defender. D-gap and C-gap. Um, since in the new defense, the wide nine, this outside linebacker or strong safety is in the C-gap, he has to react aggressively to a any run action. If they pull the, the guard, he has to step up into the C-gap. And that means he has to cover a lot of ground forward. And when it's a when he when he finally figures out that it's a play fake, he has to cover all that ground back, and now he's beat. It's not his fault. It's just the position he's put in. As you see, the the Giants pull this guard straight into the C gap. Exum, the strong safety, has to respond, be prepared to meet this guy with force and knock him back. Now he's not in position to cover the tight end. Had Eli been looking that way, could have got a big gain. He threw to the other side to Beckham, who was open. Beckham just dropped it. Here's how the 49ers' base defense defended play action last season. Now, first off, since there's no wide nine guy in the strong side defensive end right here is in the C gap, you have no linebacker who has to charge downhill and react to run action uh, between the tackles from a fullback or a pulling guard. Both the outside linebacker and the strong safety are outside the box. They have great views of the play fake, and they can react. They can diagnose the play quickly. They don't have to bite downhill hard and they can see things quickly so watch as Kirk Cousins drops back neither the strong linebacker the strong side linebacker or the strong safety uh, charges downhill like Exum did in the previous clip right watch it again they take a couple of shuffle steps forward but I'm gonna pause it when both of them f finally diagnose it uh, now now a little late but I mean here hold on let's go back Tart has his weight moving backwards, let's see, now. And Kirk Cousins is still holding the ball out. I mean, that's great diagnosis from both players because they're in position to see. Now they, ha they don't have to drop very far. They're exactly where they need to be in cover three to make this a, a no-gainer. Uh, Cousins checks down to Dalvin Cook. Only way this play goes for something is if Jaquaski Tart slips, which he does right here. He's in position to stop him. He slips. Happens sometimes. Cook gets around him. Shouldn't happen. But it does sometimes. The Niners were really actually... That Pete Carroll defense does a good job stopping play action. This new defense the Niners are going to is not the Pete Carroll defense. This wide nine defense 
It'll help them get a few more sacks on first down. And it'll help them stop the jet sweep in the outside zone when they face teams that run that. Uh, and it'll help them run cover two if they choose to. But they're sacrificing the ability to run cover three effectively. They're sacrificing to defend the play action effectively. And they're really sacrificing their run defense between the tackles. I mean, this is from this look, I wouldn't be surprised if they this if the Niners defense were given up was given up 4.6, 4.7 yards per carry next season. All in the name of getting a few more sacks on first and second down. Is it worth it? I'm not sure it is. What do you think?